and the blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sadanto Suchido Ye Alahodi San Miao Sampo Toshe. Namo Tatakha Doya Nadia Ala De Tamil Tambo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see in here, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Wu Shang 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 Wei Miao Fa Ba He Chin one Buddhists and Bodhisattvas, Venerable Ching Liang, Venerable Shen Hua, Venerable Lafong people, and all good knowing advisors, Ami Togo. Chư Phật Bồ Tát kính thưa Hòa Thượng uh, Thân Lương, Hòa Thượng Thiên Hóa, Khi Thầy Cô và Khi Phi Thị, Khi Thức Cài Chị Đạo Phật. Chư Phật Phu Sa Ching Liang Bồ Sư, uh, Today is the 12th of December 2020. Uh, we are broadcasting from Wei Mountain Temple, um, doing a Chan Chi. Uh, can I have the uh, inter temple view? I don't have it here. Thank you. So where are we? We are. Which slide are we on? I don't remember anymore. It's been a while that we since last discussed the sutra. Sixty. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. 
This is the text? Okay. Okay, we're on slide 60. Sutra text. This is we're discussing the preface text, uh, talking about uh, door number two, or the specific phrase that illustrates uh, opening and disclosing the mysterious and subtle, understanding and expanding the mind and its states, exhausting the principle and, and, and fathoming the nature penetrating result, which includes the cause. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. So, carbon three on slide 61. Hmm. Opening and disclosing the mysterious and subtle. Okay, here. Uh, opening here is to uh, dissect it and then laying it out. Uh, and disclosing and laying it out. So they are, uh, uh, this uh, sutra here uh, is uh, opening up a lot of mysteries of the universe, okay, uh, which uh, formally is called the mysterious and subtle. Uh, mysterious uh, is mysterious because it's unknown. It's too vast for us to be able to fathom, to imagine. Subtle is because it's so small, so minute, that you cannot detect, you cannot measure. Okay? So what is the mysterious and the subtle? And what is opening, or are we opening in this mysterious and disclosing this mysterious and subtle? It's referring to the Dharma realm. It's so vast, it's so infinite, that we cannot uh, size it up, we cannot penetrate it, we cannot distinguish the, even especially the minute details of the universe, okay? So, uh, so this sutra here is very important. This, uh, this is uh, inconceivable. Because in this sutra, what we'll be learning about is this universe. And the Buddha, through this sutra, is explaining to us uh, about all about this universe. You know, all, uh, we call it Dharma realm. 62. Uh, understanding and expanding the mind and its states. Okay. Understanding, here uh, actually it means, uh, I prefer to use the, the translation, I would translate as clarifying, uh, illuminating. Uh, uh, understanding here, why do I not like understanding? Understanding is about your, your, your subject, is about oneself. But Clarifying, illuminating is for us. It's the sages, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who are illuminating, clarifying these things, and these, um, uh, these mysterious and inconceivable for us, idiots. Expanding, mm. expanding mm, the mind and the states. Expanding is to enlarge it. Uh, it also means, uh, this in the particular Chinese character, it also means to empty it, to eliminate it, okay? Uh, what, is, what is the, uh, why, why these, uh, why, why the, uh, the, the, the seemingly contradictory uh, uh, meaning? Hmm. Uh, what we are enlarging is this mind and its states. Okay, um, so this mind here, uh, we need to enlarge it, meaning that we need to go outside of the box. We Westerners like to say, go outside of the box. Go outside of what you normally think, what you normally accept. Okay, uh, uh, and how do how do you go outside of what is that you are familiar 
that is which you know. Oh, okay. The only way and the most, the fastest way for you to enlarge your mind and to go beyond the familiar, beyond the traditional, is to empty it. Okay. So in particular, in Buddhism, when you practice meditation, you learn to empty your mind. And when you empty your mind, you're able to, all of a sudden, expand your mind and see more, and understand more, and comprehend more, and grasp more, absorb more. Okay? So that's why it also means emptying. Okay? Eliminate. Eliminate the false thinking. Eliminate the thinking, the thoughts. All right? Uh, so uh, here, uh, the purpose of this sutra is to expand and enlarge our mind, expand and enlarge our knowledge, okay? And it states, okay, expand the imaginations, if you will. So if you are an artist, you are in a creative process, you're a designer, okay? Uh, reading the sutra alone, for example, will help expand your mind and help you see things that you don't normally see, create things that you, don't, you, you can't normally do, okay? Uh, uh, so, uh, so there is, a, there is, in this sutra, there's a phrase, a catchphrase, it's yi uh, jie wei xin zao. Everything is created from the mind alone. So this entire universe is created from our mind alone. And what happens? Because our karmic obstructions we can only see so much. We're like on uh, a horse on blinders. That's all you can see. And we, we, we race through life, chasing after we can only see. Okay? And that's why we're so miserable. We are so uh, limited. Okay? That's why we are so petty. That's why we're so arrogant, because this is all we can see. That applies to monks as well. Boys and girls, I hope you won't make the mistake that your predecessors and your peers are making. If you think that uh, you are superior and you're good and you're better than everyone else, it's only because you're stupid. Because you can't see the person there's so many people, for example, in this, here, right now, who are far better than you. It's because there's no reason for you to think you're better than others, okay? Uh, there are others who are far better than you that you cannot see. Number one, if others may be true, then you look at someone and say, ah, it's low level. Yes, but that too is temporary. Why is that? Because in Mahayana, this thing called certain teaching, today they may be inferior to you, but once they understand the certain teaching, they leap and will surpass you. So no lead is safe. So stop thinking you're superior, you're better than others, yeah. because it's futile, okay? Yeah. Sixty-three. Uh, so exhausting the principles and fathoming the nature. Uh, exhausting the principles is to uh, to reach uh, 
to research the principles, the teachings until it's, uh, it ends, to thoroughly understand it and leave no stone unturned. Okay, uh, and and that's the pro that's the process of studying. The process of practice. Our practice is to penetrate uh, a, a teaching to its exhaustion. Don't stop before that happens. Okay, fathoming the nature. Uh, uh, the, 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 the fathom in the nature actually is a translation of a Chinese character, Jin, Qi, which is the exhaust. Uh, uh, it, it really not to fathom. Exhaust here meaning that to the very end, to all, you find all there is to it about the nature, your nature the Buddha nature, okay? Uh, uh, you, you, keep, you keep on exploring, 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 developing it, enhance it, improve it, until you, you can see all of your nature, okay? And that's why the Chinese are much more precise. It's jin, meaning to exhaust, not to fathom. Fathom is somewhat uh, pedantic, somewhat arrogant, okay? There's no need to fathom. You only need to see the end of your nature, the boundaries of your nature, okay? There's no need to fathom, okay? Just see it, yeah? Uh, so it means uh, it's, uh, there's a sense of thoroughness um, okay, so uh, and fathom of nature. So there's a there's a uh, there's a parallel here to exhaust the principles and to fathom the nature. Those are in parallel. Okay, what is a principle? Okay, the principle is a theory. Okay, uh, the theory. Uh, you hear this a lot in Buddhism. When I first started, I couldn't understand what it's referring to. People refer to uh, the, uh, I learned it especially because the Vietnamese are bookworms. They love to come to the temple and try to impress me. So they threw words at me that I couldn't understand. They threw words like li, Vietnamese li, shu. Chinese li shi, okay. Uh, English translation is li is the principle, okay. Shi is the uh, the principles are are the nomenon, okay. The theory behind it, and shi is the phenomenon, okay. This uh, I couldn't understand it, I, and and when I talked to my my uh, Dharma brothers, I asked them, what does it mean? Because I got fed up with all these uh, uh, smart aleck Vietnamese coming to the temple trying to impress me. And I couldn't answer them. And they keep on quoting, li shu, li shu, shu, all those things in Vietnamese. And I said, so what does it mean, uh, Dharma master? And they said, oh, so they tried to give me an answer, but they couldn't understand it. Okay, they couldn't give me the answer. So. This sutra, the, this concept of Li Shu here, actually is thoroughly explained in this sutra. Okay? Uh, everything uh, in, uh, in the world, in, in the Dharma realm, in this universe, okay, uh, belongs to either Li or Shu. Okay? A principle, a theory, or a, uh, a, 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 a phenomenon, or you can say you, everything is e can be explained by the theory, it relates back to a theory, or a manifestation of a theory. In mathematics, we like to call it an instance. In the 
translation of the, uh, uh, this uh, sutra here from my master's temple, they use the word specific. Okay? So let's talk about an example, just to simplify things. What's the theory? Okay? Anything in this universe can be explained, let's say, by one theory, which is? What is this one theory that explains everything that occurs in this universe? How you become a god? How you're born here? How you become a man uh, and a woman? Uh, how can you be happy? How can you be unhappy? How, 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 how? Okay? What is that theory? Yes, sir. I hear a voice from a tomb. How do you become a god? Okay. How many ways are there to become a god? How many ways are there to become a... A goat? Thank you. <laughs> yes? Must say that the cause and effect? Absolutely. The universal law is cause and effect. Whatever you see the result is. The manifestation is the effect of something that happened in the past. All right? So, for example, people say, I want to be with God. That's the effect. I want to be born in the heavens. That's the effect. Right? So what is the cause? The cause is you create heavenly blessings so that you can be reborn to the heavens at your time of death. Okay? That's simple. Okay? And once you understand that, you understand that's the principle behind it. Okay? Then, how do you apply it to your daily life? How do you create blessings? Okay? That's, so you go out and you practice charity. You do charitable. You give charitable contributions. That's an example of, uh, of creating heavenly blessings. Okay, that's a that's a an instance. Uh, it's a manifestation an instance of the specifics of the theory behind it. Right? In Buddhism, uh, especially in Mahayana, we don't necessarily uh, feel that it's efficient to do charitable contribution. We don't do charity work because it's too slow for us. Okay. Uh, uh, so we have other means, uh, like uh, bowing to the Buddhas. That creates even more blessings than doing charity work. Okay? Uh, praying to the Buddha, that creates more blessings than uh, building a church, believe it or not. It creates so many blessings that one day, you will become a Buddha yourself, okay? And along the way, you can be reborn to the heavens just to satisfy your curiosity, okay? And we all should go to the heavens just for a tour. Uh, like, uh, we should have, uh, we, by the way, we will establish a traveling arm called Bodhi Light Travels, okay? Uh, and we can guide you on these various packages, okay? By boat, by airplanes, okay? And so forth, okay? We call it full service temple, all right? So that, so you see, there's a principle. So, so in, in Buddhism, we can learn about all these, the, all various types of principles 
And so that because of these principles, when you see something happen, you see, ah, that's, there's a principle behind this event, behind this observation, behind this fact. Is it clear? So that, that's a concept of principles and uh, instance or uh, principles or specific, the, an example of the principle. Okay? So far, so good? Any questions? YouTube has a question. Elta D asks, is the universe created from our mind alone or from the one Buddha mind alone? The universe, as you see it, is just the Buddha mind. All right? So, going back to slide 63. Uh, last bullet, bullet here. It says principle in the nature. Okay? The principle uh, is uh, uh, another, another name for the nature. Okay? The, the, so, the the principles and the nature are basically equivalent. Uh, we can use principles, some principles to eventually understand the nature. The nature encompasses all principles. So you will thoroughly understand the entire universe and the principles that are contained within this universe. All right? Sixty-four, penetrating the result which includes the cause. Okay? Mm. Penetrating uh, is to uh, pierce through, to drill to, through. You practice Chan, for example. In the Chan world, uh, when you invest, investigate a topic, uh, the analogy is like you use a drill. You drill through it. You drill through, you know, through, through, you choose a point to drill through it. That point could be a, in, an inv investigation topic. It could be a mantra. Uh, could be, you know, that by, by focusing single-mindedly on that one process, uh, one dharma door, and unfortunately, the Chinese Chan nowadays they keep on using, especially my Chinese master keeps on using the concept of, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, investigating investigation, investigated topic, Chan Chan. Uh, it, it's it's uh, unfortunately it's misunderstood, okay? Uh, because the Chan Chan here is not necessarily the Huang Tao, but actually you. Keep on, keep on contemplating that one thing, whether it's mantra or the Buddha's name or or a hot hole or whatever. Okay, uh, that is that is the called investigation topic. Because since you, you know, the Chinese, the way that were uh, the the, uh, the the they were taught are lower levels. That's why they translated that as simply as the hot hole. But it's not. It's like you. Investigate you. You concentrate. You focus single-mindedly single on one topic. Right? Okay. Like, uh, let's say you uh, you focus on your breathing, your breath. One top, one thing. Look at your breath. One thing. How it goes, moves up and down, up and down, up and down. So far, so good. People are hurt up. Breath counting. That's what the Hinayana people teach. You count your breath, so forth. Okay? So when you do that, eventually you're able to, uh, to the Hinayana people are able to certify to four stage art. Anyone have done it before? Not you. Why not? Too slow. Again, okay. it works. It really works. 
but to me, a little bit too slow. So that's, that's why we don't teach it, okay? Uh, uh, again, like, why do charity work? I can do, <laughs> I create so far more blessings instead of doing charity work, okay? I, you know, there's so many more things that I know that we can do. It's the people who do charity work is because they don't know of more effective ways to create heavenly blessings. That's all. <laughs> we have objections. <laughs> yes. Uh, green. But I, I do have a question, actually. Um, uh, uh, well, on the Buddhist way, you do create, um, what they call heavenly, no, not heavenly blessings. You create blessings, right? But it's not the point of charity work not to only help the person, but also to, com to, to help them go to heaven or to go to a um, higher level of Africa or to um, the highest level of heaven, Africa, or it's called. Right. The different uh, levels of heavens. That's correct. Depending right. on your the amount of heavenly blessings you have. Just like here, if you are poor, you live in roast meat like I do. Okay? That's all the blessings I have. Okay? When you're better, you move to San Diego, it's closer to the ocean. <laughs> okay? Look at them, you see? Okay. So, you see, there's a difference in the level of blessings that corresponds to where you can end up, end up being. It's very simple, fit law of physics, okay? So, uh, so yes, you, you're, you're, we, so that's the advantage of generating a lot of blessings is that now you have choices. It's like you have a lot of money, okay? I wish I had a lot, a lot of money and I pretend to be poor, so I live in Rosemead, but then actually I have another house in Beverly Hills, okay? okay. So that's, that's, that's how it works. Now, it's not just that. It's also, along your questions, uh, is, is um, uh, how do we get there, right? You may have blessings. Doesn't mean you can get there, right? Uh, you may have the money, but all the houses in Beverly Hills are not for sale, okay? Uh, something like that, or a house that you want to buy is not, is not for sale, so we're going to wait. So it's not ready yet. You cannot use those blessings yet. Make sense? The other reason is much more important reason that we Buddhists understand and specialize in resolving, in solving, is what? Obstructions. You want something, it's fine, okay? Problem is that quite often the obstructions to you getting there. You want to go uh, to uh, the beach from Rosemead okay, and hop on the freeway and then there is a car accident. So it delays you. But half an hour, yes? Or it's maybe it's you who have an accident. God forbids. Okay? So you see, life is not as simple as you think. There's so many different forces in action at play that just because you have the heavenly blessings, it's still not enough. It's no, still no guarantee that you, you make it to the heavens. It's funny, I have, uh, 15 years ago, one of my early disciples, Caucasian uh, a gentleman, his, uh, his, uh, his mother is devout Catholic. And she retired and left him a house in, uh, in uh, Kalsbad or something like that, worth about $400,000 okay, back then. This is a long, long time ago. Okay. And, uh, and uh, she's a, a very sweet lady, very smart. Uh, it runs in a family, a family of very smart people. And, and uh, she says, she's, she's a very kind person as well. And she says, when I die, all I want to do 
is go to be with my God. That's all I want. Okay? I don't care. Uh, so, so he left behind, he left uh, le uh, uh, sh 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 my disciple. I don't think he's a disciple anymore. But my, 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 my ex-disciple uh, is very, uh, very, uh, very, um, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 good man, okay? And, and so she, uh, he's, it's, he, he's her favorite. Uh, and, and so she left him most of her, 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 her fortune. Where, and instead, his sister only gets uh, a lot less of it. Okay. Anyway, so, so he, he went and I advised him to about the 40, 49 day, the period land 49 day, but uh, he, no, no that's, that's too much. So I said, at least go to, uh, I'm doing free advertising for my colleague here, my Sea Lai Temple. Have you heard of it? Go there, set up a rebirth plan for her. It's only one thousand dollars. Best deal in town. <laughs> for that money, it's well worth it. Okay, they have a beautiful, beautiful building. You know, uh, and that's a that's a budget rate anyway. So, so he went there and set up a a plaque. Okay, uh, a rebirth plan for her. And guess what happened? Because of that. She went to the heavens. Okay? Unfortunately, she overshot the heavens. Instead of going to the Christian heavens, it went a little bit higher because it's <laughs> too many heavenly blessings. Okay? So, um, This, the, the, uh, in Buddhism, you develop the skills to resolve all these obstructions. That's all. Okay? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's um, uh, how do we get to this? Where are we? Hmm. Okay. So, hmm. so you penetrate, going back to slides. Oh, YouTube has a question. Go ahead, YouTube. Diego Alfonso asks, Master, I suppose you have taught this before, but what should we do when we are meditating besides breath work and visualization of the Buddha? Uh, you, you should uh, follow uh, your uh, meditation teacher's instructions. If they teach you to follow the breath, follow the breath. If someone teaches you something else, do something else. Okay? All those things work. Uh, uh, so uh, it's about, it's about um, uh, uh, getting uh, meditation is, a pro is about getting the proper guidance and help in order to make progress. Okay? So it doesn't matter which, uh, which way you practice. It's about following the instructions, the advices of the instructor. Okay? Unfortunately, uh, you, um, for most people, they don't find a good instructor. That's why they uh, lose their faith. And, and uh, in, when we practice meditation in Mahayana, we follow the instructor's instructions. We don't try to uh, do anything. The assumption is that if you find a good instructor and that person has the kind of wisdom you don't have, the kind of training experience you don't have, therefore, uh, you can get uh, uh, a lot more out of your time and your efforts than otherwise, than trying to reinvent the wheel. Okay? Uh, especially for professionals like us, we are trained uh, to meditate. And then eventually, when we have the skills and the opportunity, then we train how to train others to meditate. So, uh, from our perspective, Diego, I would follow the uh, instructor and making, making sure, assuming you get a good instructor. All right, going back to slide 64, uh, penetrating the result, okay? Uh, you penetrate through, penetrate here has 
has a concept of obstruction. You penetrate, you go inside, go beyond the obstruction, like the wall here we have. The wall is pre uh, preventing us from seeing clearly on the other side. So before we can get to the other side, we need to penetrate it, okay? And make, make our way through it, pierce through it. And that's meditation. Meditation is, is to pierce through the fog in our mind, okay? You penetrate the result. The result is that uh, whatever you reserve, observe as uh, whatever can be observed. Uh, the result uh, here uh, is actually the fruit, uh, which is linked to the seed. Okay, the fruit is the connection to the seed. Okay, and this fruit is there because of a seed. Uh, so, uh, so, and then in the fruit itself, you have the seed uh, for future, future fruits, okay? So, um, so you, now, now you're talking about layers, okay? Meaning what? It says that you penetrate result, meaning whatever you see, someone being born to the heaven, that's what you see, the result is birth to the heavens. And you look at that and say, ah, here's what happened. This is why it happened. Okay? So you penetrate the result and you say, there is a reason behind it. It didn't happen in a haphazard way. There's a reason. There's a causation right there. Okay? And then, so you see, when you're able to see that, that's called wisdom. When you see one fruit that result the, you know, one, one seed that created a fruit, which itself has more seeds, creates even more fruits, layers upon layers upon layers upon layers through time. Okay? Uh, so, cause and effect are actually... Uh, interconnected uh, uh, seeds and fruits are mutually uh, uh, correlated okay and so so you have these this succession of cause and effects a cause and effect cause and effect cause and effect okay and you look at through times you know, and that's called multi layers so far so good you will see this hmm. in 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 uh, in in uh, the, this Avatamsaka Sutra, you see layers upon layers of cause and effects. Okay? Uh, and this Dharma realm you observe is, uh, this is a fruit that came from an infinite, infinite number of causes, infinite layer, layers of causes and effects. Okay, uh, just look at yourself. You yourself is the effect. What you are today is the effect of a prior cause. Okay, some of you mm, came from the heavens. Okay. Okay, some of you came from a pure land. Okay, I don't know about those who came from the heavens. <laughs> But those from, uh, who came from a pure land are here because Amitabha Buddha sent them back here, okay, uh, to do work. Some of you came back here so that you can save your mother. Some of you came back here so that you can save your sister. Okay? Oh, but... So you came back here because Amitabha sent you, which also before that, uh, you made a vow to say, I will save my mother. I will save my father. That's the third layer right there. So far, so good? Okay. And then we're only looking at 
only three layers where you can imagine you keep going back, going back, going back, like the Buddha, so you use the Buddha eye, you will see that succession of cause and effect, cause and effect. That's what is called by layers. Okay? Layers upon layers of cause and effects. That's how wonderful it is. It's not as simple as you think. The reason you hear, we hear today, okay, uh, investigating this sutra, okay, is because of prior causes. We in a prior many lifetimes ago got together and said, wow, let's cultivate, let's, let's investigate this Avatamsaka Sutra. Because we did it before and said, wow, this is so great, so fantastic. Let's do it again. Because we're not done yet. We still need have to finish to do a lot more investigation. Okay? So that's, that's why we're here today. And that's why when we talk about this nonsense here, uh, even though you don't quite understand what I'm talking about, you still don't run away. Okay? Something is kind of tying you down. Okay? That's from a prior vow. says, let's investigate it. Okay? See that? So that's layers upon layers of cause and effect. Yes, sir. Great. So, um, so if, it's, uh, if everything is cause and effect, can uh, something be created out of nothing? My question is like, for example, let's say that you've never been to the heavens or to the hell, just born, or can that be happen? Can that happen in the Buddhist religion? For something to happen in this universe, you heard of the concept of energy, yes? Right? Everything has energy. Right? Whether it's a uh, 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 things contain energy. Right? Correct. Okay. So for that, for anything to happen, this some kind of energy must be the it must must activate it, okay, to create, to bring that forth, bring that to fruition, right? And that is cause and effect right there, right? So you have to have some kind of energy, okay, uh, like a machinery, okay, to create, to create a product, okay? You, the seed itself contains energy, and along with the energy from the sun, from the water, from the temperature, temperature is energy. And that manifests into a tree. Along with fertilizer and forth, fertilizers are energy. And that with all that, you have more energy that are combined together to create another fruit, create fruits. So whatever happens are observable because they are energy which were created from prior different kinds of energies. So how can something come from nothing? That's not possible. Okay? So what is this energy in the universe? This, what is, do you know? Of course you don't know that. You guys don't, don't learn about these things. The primordial energy in the universe is Is it's inside of you. No, I'm not talking about your eggs. I'm talking about something else. What is it? Can I point it out to you? Can I dissect it, open it, and reveal it for you? Give me a knife. Give me a knife. Sir, can, can, you, can I ask you to come up here? Uh, yeah, yeah, bring a knife with you as well. 
I'm kidding. Sit down. Jeez, this guy can do anything. Uh, such a good uh, externalist. <laughs> what is your energy? Yes. Yes, but be more precise. What is the energy? Yes. Green, green. Isn't that something you guys call chi? Chi? Uh-huh. We're getting closer. Very good. Okay. What is, what is, what is? He's getting close. He's getting warm. Ah, very good. Are you Buddhist or Catholic? Are you externalist for God? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, YouTube. Okay. What is, what is YouTube? Answer quickly, quickly. Diego Alfonso says Buddha nature. Buddha nature. Uh, uh, no. Okay. What is the energy? We're not talking about Buddhas. We're talking about ourselves. What is the energy? Come on. You should know that. Helen, what's the energy? You have it. Billy, he knows, yes? Give him a microphone, please. It's okay. That's okay. He got it. Yeah. What is it? Black. It's the human mind's negative what we always think about. It's the negative that we think every day. Thank you. From Rose Meat, California. Comes the answer. Your mind, your thoughts are the original energy of this universe. Huh? Remember? Remember? One day. One day. You see that because when I was younger, when you were younger, you play games only, video games. Okay? Only video games. Okay? All your energy, mental energy is on playing these video games. Yes? Because of that, what do you have? What is the result of your future? Nothing. <laughs> All your energy is wasted on video games because it's totally non-creative. It doesn't create anything. Okay? However, if you think about your homework, your lessons, okay? Your mathematics, your geometry. Guess what? In the future, that energy becomes what? A bridge. A, a car. You become an engineer. You can, you know, all this energy, this mental energy, is what you use to create something called a car. A bridge. Money. What else? You see that? It's all mental energy. That's why you need to use your mind properly. Does it make sense? That's the, or the original energy is your mind, your thinking. So it's just, just for example, you know, the, you, you, uh, where I came from, a lot of people, uh, they, they said, I want to become a millionaire. And what do they do? That's initial thought right there. I want to become a millionaire. I want to become a doctor. I want to become rich so that I support my poor mother. Very poor mother. <laughs> okay? Because if I don't, who will? Think about it. 
Okay? So for me, it's slightly different. I wanted to get run away from my mother. <laughs> so, so I became a monk. <laughs> okay, that's different, totally different story. But for normal people, they said, I want to become rich. I want to become a doctor. I want to become a lawyer so that I can make money and support my family and my mother and my parents and so forth, right? Because of that mental energy drive, that's how the energy that enabled them eventually to get to where they want to be later in life. How can you tell me that, that there's no energy? Of course, everything is energy. And it starts with this. So when you meditate, you learn to focus the energy and use it more efficiently. Now, if you buy into that, don't you think that meditation is, should be a requirement as part of education? Huh? Think about it. This is what we use all day. Superior children, by the way, do chant. YouTube has a question. Uh, LTD asks, I thought our minds are false. Does that mean the universe is false? Does that mean the Buddhas are false too? Yes and no. It's false to you. It's true to us. We could coexist. You are false, but I'm true. Just like some humans, the humans are true, some are Catholic, some are Buddhist. The false ones are Catholic, and the true ones are Buddhist. Hey, it's my, it's my lecture, okay, you can say anything I want. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, shall we continue? Sixty-five, text, deep and wide and interfused, vast and great and totally complete. Surely this must be the great, great means, expensive Buddha flower adornment sutra. Ah, see this part of the, uh, the preface. So it's deep and wide and interfused. Deep, very profound, wide. Uh, like the ocean, okay? Deep is like this, wide is like this. So you have three dimensions immediately, right? Uh, deep is go dig down, wide is like this. So you have three dimensions in our world, deep and wide. Interfuse. Uh, uh, interfuse here, uh, minute and mixed, meaning that they're, everything is interconnected, okay? Uh, we are all interconnected, right? Uh, and, uh, and all the principles are discussed in the Flower Adornment Sutra are all interconnected. They're all deep, they're all wide, they're all interfused. And that's beauty, the beauty of Mahayana. Once you learn, you have a better idea about Mahayana, Mahayana depicts this universe here through these various principles, and you see how, how beautifully described, it's how beautifully they are described by in Mahayana, okay? It's infinite, and, and that's the mindset of Mahayana, okay? It's inexhaustible. You don't say, for example, in contrast to, to Theravada, Hinayana, you say, this is it, this is, this is all. This is all the principles contained. The principles contained here in a Flower Dormant Sutra is infinite. Okay? 
just like the universe is infinite. YouTube has a question. Uh, Tiango asks, uh, Master, what kind of cause or energy would cause externalists or Catholics to be present at your Dharma talks? I can think of a few causes. Uh, one cause is that uh, they got lost. They used to be Buddhist and they got lost. Number two, uh, they used to be Buddhist. They were disappointed by the Buddhist monks, so they decided to, to switch. But once they heard about me, they said, ah, I don't care. Uh, but I seemed like I like to listen to his Avatam Saka Sutra lectures again. <laughs> so they came back. Grudgingly. And it's number three, it's a girlfriend who pulled him here by the ears. <laughs> okay? Uh, number four, I owe him. He's here to afflict me to no end. <laughs> you see? It, it layers upon layers upon layers of causes. Next, 67. And vast and great and totally complete. Uh, vast and great. Uh, filling up the three dimensions. When you talk about three dimensions, it's infinite. Okay? Into infinity. Okay? Totally complete. Uh, everything that you want to know about this universe are here in this sutra, contained here in sutra. Surely this must be the great means expensive Buddha flower adornment sutra. That's why this sutra is all that you ever want to know. Okay, you want to understand. Then this sutra will give you all the answers. How many, this is the only Buddhist sutra that makes this claim, by the way. No other Buddhist sutra can make that claim. All the other Buddhist sutras are just one section, one aspect, okay, of Mahayana. This sutra, it's the whole ball of wax. That is why, by the way, until Master Xinhua, my late Chinese teacher, came along. Very few monks and nuns dare explain the sutra because they don't understand it. So when Master Xinhua started explaining that years ago, uh, the whole sutra. Uh, my master, he does everything in a grandiose way. You know, you explain the universe, you know, through the sutra in 10 years, which is impossible. Five lectures a day at times. Two hours lecture, five times a day, okay? Uh, so the duration is 10 years of lecture. This is what we got today. And so it's a feat that is incredible. Uh, and, and, uh, and so vast, great, and totally complete. You know, it, it is all-encompassing. It's complete. It's nothing lacking at all. Okay. Yeah. And after Master Xinhua did that, many more monks felt compelled, so they started uh, explaining again, explaining as well. Uh, but uh, but uh, it's not the same, doesn't feel the same way, because uh, 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 the, they don't have the uh, samadhi and the wisdom and the uh, skills of my late Chinese master. Uh, all right, 
Any questions or comments? Yes. Master, um, one quick question. So I'm about to reach the nine days of fasting. And no. uh, so... How many days has it been so far? Today is the seventh day. Oh, you're not that close, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is your question. Uh, what comes after that? <laughs> Should I ask you this question on the eighth or in the ninth day? <laughs> Go ahead, assuming the eighth and ninth day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Go ahead, assuming today is the eighth and ninth day. Hmm. Um, well, I haven't been hungry. Um, I saw the apple and then I say, well, somebody said, uh, what you're looking is now how it appears, so then I delete the apple. <laughs> okay. um, it's just, uh, I mm -hmm. think today in the morning was my lowest in energy. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I was processing that I actually chose to, uh, that this was going to be my, yeah. my worst day. And then once yeah. I reversed that, then I don't know, I felt better. Yeah. So I don't know. Excuse me. Um, I'll be right back. <laughs> as you're talking, as she's talking, for some reason, I feel like smelling don't do this to me. some uh, an apple. <laughs> Uh, sorry, you were saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's very good. That means that you have a lot of energy. That's, that's excellent. Uh, keep it up. Hope you make it to nine days, and then we talk again. Okay, excellent. Seven days without much of a struggle, but it can hit you anytime. That's the thing. Okay. Uh, so we see, okay? Yeah. Be sweet to your baby, just in case. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, now I have to eat it. Oh, God. I really feel bad now. I really now, you know, what am I going to do? You can't put it back up there. <laughs> I will put it here, just in case. <laughs> no, 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 you can't smell it. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> mm, so fragrant. Um, okay, 68. Door number three. Uh, hosts inconceivability. Uh, therefore, our honored one, the ten bodies just fulfilled, proper enlightenment first perfected, Rights, vows, and conduct, all pervasive. Ah, so therefore, in the, on the comment, commentary on slide 69, therefore our world honored one, okay? Our world honored one, our world, world honored one is the title of the Buddha. Our world honored one is because it's ours. It's for He's all of us. He belongs to all of us. Okay? Uh, he's, he doesn't discriminate. He's here for all of us. Believers and non-believers, even if you don't believe, he'll find a way to help you. You believe, then you get there quicker. Okay? He'll probably send you over to us. Just a commercial. Okay, so our, our world honored one. Um, 
therefore, uh, and therefore is as a result, consequently, our, okay, uh, we're honored one, uh, and the we're honored one, uh, why is the we're honored one? Uh, because it's, uh, he has rich with multitudes of virtues. Okay, and this is the meaning of we're honored one. Shu Zun, okay, we're honored one, honored by the entire world. Okay, why are you honored by the world? The world honors you because of your virtues. If you don't have virtues, they will slander you. Okay? That's the opposite right there. This Buddha here is, has so many virtues. He's so virtuous that, he, that, that, that people look at him, you take a look at him, and you certainly feel like honoring him because something about one of his virtues, one of his multitude of virtues, appeal to you. That's why he's honored. It's hard earned. It's not talk. So far so good? Okay. He has a multitude of protectors because when you're honored, uh, people worry about your welfare. Yes? It's just like you worry about the welfare of an emperor. Uh, you, when you, you are, when you honor, uh, you have were honored one. This Buddha ha has a, a, a tremendous uh, amount of Dharma protectors. They're protecting him day and night. Okay, uh, the were honored one also has a meaning of awe-inspiring. Okay, uh, wait and virtues. Hmm. Uh, that the virtues that he embodies okay, generates deep respect in us. Not just admiration, respect. And so that, that we aspire to be like him. Okay? Uh, we want to be up there with him reach that kind, that level of virtues. Also, we're not one also has, has also means well-known, well-known. It's, you know, that, that, that uh, why is it well-known? Because, 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 why is it well-known? Is well known because a lot of people benefit from, from him. That's why he's well known. They know about him so that they can take advantage of him. Hmm. Okay? They keep on coming to draw from his well. Okay? Imagine. Our world is like a Sahara desert. What happened to the boy? He went to play video games? <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's well known. It, uh, it's well known uh, because, because people benefit from it. They know about it because they know it's beneficial for them. Many people know, because if you're not beneficial, they would rather forget about you. Yes? Totally useless information. Useless knowledge. But if you're useful, that's why people remember you. And the more useful you are, the more well-known you are, because they keep on benefiting more and more and more of you, from you, okay? They're venerated and noble. Uh, venerated uh, because they are, uh, they are, they, they, uh, they did, uh, they did great deeds, and noble because of their stature. Okay. So, uh, 
They're venerated by the deviants. Uh, 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 the even themselves are venerated uh, by their own retinues, okay? And their own externalist retinues, okay? But they're not noble. Questions? YouTube has a question. Thank you. Uh, Diego Alfonso asks, how can we get to the first cause that caused all the infinite reactions? How do you get there? Uh, I don't know how. Okay, I was never taught how. In Buddhism, the Buddha described how it, got, it all uh, got all started. Hopefully, we'll be here in the sutra later on. Uh, if you don't feel like continuing with the sutra because it's like so vast, like a universe, and you're going to miss one of those lectures, okay? Just in case you're going to miss one of the lectures, I will mention how we got started, okay? Uh, uh, shall we tell him or shall we make him wait? Take a vote. Do you know Diego? Okay, then we don't have to tell him. You don't know him, then he's not known, then he's not very useful to us, is he? But because our externalist friend here is into charity, we do charity tonight. Okay? We give him, we give him the answer that he can't understand anyway. <laughs> It's, it's useless information. When I first heard of this piece of information in like 25 years ago, I said, say what? So I'm not sure he wants to hear it. Do you want to hear it? I gave you the, the hint, I hit, dropped the hint already and you have to force me. Uh, okay, be that way. I remember those who nodded their heads. Uh, before, there is a Buddha nature, which is the vast expanse of emptiness. There's nothing there. Okay? The universe, well, this is way, 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 way back then what we call beginningless time. Wu Shi. Wu Shi. Beginningless time. Long, long. It's so, so long ago back then that no one could remember anymore except for the Buddha. Unless you're Buddha, you cannot know when. So far, so good? Okay. This is the truth. This is why it takes the Buddha to see that very first beginning until now or into the future to tell us this whole thing here, okay? But for us, we cannot imagine that. We cannot possibly conceive of it. I don't care how many tacos you eat. It doesn't matter. You cannot conceive. You can go back far enough. It's not possible. You don't have enough time to go back that far. You die way before that. Okay? Huh. So, it's not like archaeology, you can go back and, you know, a hundred million years ago and so forth, you dig someone, ah, oh, that's a billion years ago and so forth. You know, uh, it's still nothing. It's just as long as, as, a, as a, that's long in the span of beginningless time. Okay? That's how scary it is. The wisdom of the Buddha, he can see, woo all the way back. So long, way back then. It's vast expense of emptiness. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. And then what happened? Does anyone know? All of a sudden, one false thought arises. 
one full suck. Says the full set says. Need light. And what happened? You know what I mean, Sean? Sean said, huh? <laughs> You're so pure. I cannot believe how pure you are. <laughs> what else would you use light for? <laughs> uh, oh, okay, back to PG-13. Okay, okay, I behave. Uh, so there's this false lot that says, you need more light. One false thought, you need more light. And it's a false thought. And that started the whole mess. And then another thought arises, another thought arises, another thought arises. And each thought creates it's more, the more thoughts, the more the universe is filled up with junk. Isn't that fascinating? Don't try to understand. I still can't understand what it means. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. The Buddha says, everything is fine. Everything is so perfect. And then some idiots says, one false thought, okay? Probably some kind of, you know, those people, okay? One false thought, I need to be with light, okay? And then it all started from there. It's so cool that the Buddha can see that. He says, that one single thought there started it all. All right, continuing. Mm -hmm. This is commentary on slide 70. The 10 bodies just fulfill. Okay? This refers to what happened, historical event. Shakmina Buddha became a Buddha under the Bodhi tree. Okay, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, so as soon as he became a Buddha, he immediately has ten bodies, and that's part of the blessings of being a Buddha. You come equipped with ten bodies. In contrast, when we came to this world. How many bodies do we have? Okay, that's the difference between us and the Buddha. Okay, so he became a Buddha. Uh, ten bodies are uh, the bodies of living being. Okay, living beings are a body of the Buddha, meaning. Even non-Buddhists are also part of the body of the Buddha. Isn't that cool? How could we possibly reject the non-Buddhists? We love, like our president says, I love the non-Buddhists. I love them to death with the COVID. I know it's not funny. Yeah, it's painful. Yeah. 
Some are harder to love than others. Okay? You see that? So, living beings, all the bodies we have, are actually the body of the Buddha. What does it mean? That when you're in pain, he knows that you're in pain. That's why he sent me here to explain the sutra to you. So far, so good? So that's one body. Okay? So that's why, if you understand that, one day when you become a Buddha, you have ten bodies yourself, and part of one of the bodies is that living being's body, meaning that we all are part of his body. Part of the same thing. That's why we don't reject. It, would a body reject an arm? Would this arm slander the other? Only because it's stupid. <laughs> See that? Thank you. Uh, go away. Okay, you see that? That's why the Buddha rejects no one. Loves everyone. Harms no one. If you want to become a Buddha. Oh, hey, that's cool. Let me try that. Give it to me more. Okay, anyway, uh, uh, so uh, he has a question from YouTube. Uh, Tango asks, Master, why or what caused the very first false thought to happen? That's where I'm always stuck at. I don't get it. This is the beginning part of the 12 dependent conditions. No, it's not, it's not that. It's different. Okay? It's totally different. I don't know. The Buddha only taught, explained that that's what happened. He never explained why. So I don't know why. Buddha never explained it to us. I can't wait until I become a Buddha and then say, ah, now I know why. <laughs> okay. Are we done with the YouTube question? Or is still more? Uh, from L to D, uh, was the first false thought also the Buddha? We don't know. The, the point there is that the, the energy, remember, someone asked about energy, okay, and where does it come from, the energy? That energy of that first thought started the chain reactions. It's fantastic. Okay? And that's all we know. That's all the Buddha deemed that we we worthy to know. That's what he taught us. I'm happy he taught us something. Okay, yeah, because yeah, you 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 tell them you tell me more. I say okay, and then what happened before that? And then what happened before that? And what happened before that? Okay. Instead. I feel, personally, I feel it's much better off. Uh, it's not that important to know why, but it's more important to me how to end this madness, how to end, to get out of this mess. And, and, uh, and be happier. Okay? Hmm. <laughs> Cool. Okay. Second body. Second body is the body of the Buddha land. Okay? Uh, meaning that, yes. Give a microphone. Blue. Master, uh, once I heard that um, they say uh, uh, 
I, I don't know if it's a being, but that living, well, that being uh, just ask himself, had these silly questions to say, what would it be to be separated? You were saying we are, we are uh, that body is the Buddha's body. So this part of the body, the Buddha's body, that what would it be to be separated? And then he, he sparked other thoughts that they actually went to a, a sleep to this uh, uh, dream so that now that we are in this world, we are just keep creating uh, this story. Um, then we need to be awakened so that we can actually get back to our origin, which is, you know, that nature. Stop hurting others. When you awaken, you stop hurting others. You only hurt others because you are confused. If you really awakened, you, you would not have a harming mind at all. Okay? Uh, so that's why we strive to awaken. We don't strive to be up there and be happy. We strive to, be, to awaken so that we stop hurting others. Because our being here, actually, we are hurting others. And that's compassion. Part of being compassionate, we see the suffering in others. The Buddha says, you are suffering. I know you're suffering. So I need to do something to relieve your suffering. Okay? All the pain you experience, he knows. It's just like within your body. You know, if it hurts here, you know, oh, oh, it's my arm, it's my wrist, it's hurting. Okay? Next is my head, I'm having a headache. Okay? And so forth. Because he knows. Because he knows where it hurts. That's why he become, that's why he has compassion. Compassion is to know, to be aware of suffering. So he's trying to tell us that you're hurting, you're suffering. And in particular, you're hurting others around you because of your own misery. You're hurting, and you, because you're hurt, you keep on hurting, creating more hurt on others and on yourselves. Okay? Case in point. You're there, and someone comes over and hurts you for whatever the reasons. Okay? Right? Okay? And you say, why did you hurt me? So your natural reaction is, hurt them. Because you're confused. Once you become enlightened, you say, awaken. You say, oh, it's okay. It's okay. I know you're hurting. That's why you're hurting me. But I'm not going to hurt you back. Instead, I'm going to try to help you become an, uh, awaken yourself. If you have the attitude, then you're closer to becoming a Buddha. Because Buddha then says, I know how to help you. So I put an image of myself up there, okay? A statue up there so that my disciple, some kind of bald-headed guy, get you to come to his temple and say, hey, that's, that's Sakamuni Buddha right there. He say, oh, hi, Buddha. Because of that trick, you one day will become a Buddha and yet your suffering will end. That's what's cool about it. or send my Buddhist disciple over and act as your girlfriend and pull you to the temple and say, you don't come? I will leave you. You come, I love you more. See, all those things. 
is being done because they see you're hurting. And you know, when you try to help someone who's hurting, guess what happens? They bite you first. <laughs> Buddha knows that. He says, it's okay. When you bite me, then, uh, it's not good. Uh, <laughs> can you stop, please? No, no. When you bite me, then you can't bite your wife. You have less strength to bite your children and your neighbors and your boss. See that? They know you come near a enraged dog, he's going to bite you. But what are you going to do? What can the Buddha do? He says, should I shoot the dog? If you shoot the dog, it's like shooting yourself. That's Buddhist wisdom, my friends. Yeah, cool. We get upset because we only see a slice of time. The Buddha says, sees, yes, right now you're biting me, but in the future, okay, you become my dog. Okay? And I beat the heck out of you. So we get even back then. It's no hurry. <laughs> See that? It's so cool. Imagine you have that kind of wisdom. How can you get afflicted anymore? Huh? You say, honey, I know it's entrapment, but I still love you. I'm a bigger man than that. Cool? Uh, second body, Buddha land. Part of his being a Buddha is have his own galaxy. That's his body. Okay? Isn't it fasc fascinating? The galaxy here, Milky Way, is part of the body of Shakyamuni Buddha. All right? I think this is enough to, to make, a, what is that, the famous uh, um, um, Tyson or whatever? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that guy. To go, to go, oh, wow. I love Mahayana. I love Avatamsaka Sutra. Because you get to know more about the universe you can ever dream of without having the sand voyagers up there and wait for six years to reach the end of the Buddha land and then pick up some sands to bring back. Baffling. Okay, next, next, next body is reward, the ye bao shen, the reward, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, reward or the uh, retribution uh, from your karmas, okay? Meaning, that the retribution is, for example, uh, for example, after you listen to this sutra here, to, to tonight's lecture, you get so excited and say, wow, this is such, so enlightening, this is so wonderful. What do you do? You go home, and on the way back, you stop by a supermarket, okay? It's okay, it's perfectly legal even during this, this lockdown, okay? Essential needs. Stop by a supermarket, get some flowers, and give it to your wife. Honey, I love you. The more I know about Buddhism, what happened to me? I know of a man who comes here to 
the bitter, uh, 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 what's the word? The bitter uh, 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 complaint, uh, uh, huh? Opposition, no, even a better word. Uh, 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 will come to me eventually. Too many bodies for me to remember. Uh, okay, to the the the, the vehement. Uh, 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 complaint, not complaint. Okay, whatever. Opposition, not opposition. Uh, okay, uh, she complains that he, he goes to the temple too often. So, that's why, that's why you you're smart, you go to the temple. You know that the husband, the, the wife, or the girlfriend doesn't like it. You spend less time. Well, unless you're together. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> then you save yourself some flower money. Uh, but gelato would be appropriate. Uh, so so you, you say, honey, my love, this, this only captures a small part of how I feel about you tonight. Just tonight. Okay? Because of that, you get a good breakfast tomorrow. And that's part of the bao, that's the reward. You do something good, you get the good rewards. That's my whole point. Okay? You need to do good. You don't, you don't do bad. So the Buddha here, this, this, this reward body is, he has so many adorned, splendid okay, things in his world. It's because of all these good deeds he created in the past, including bringing flowers to your loved ones. Yes. We answer your question? Yeah, okay. Very good. Hmm. YouTube has a question. Go ahead. The ass and master. Uh, Alta Diaz Master, so are we technically in a Buddha land? Are you technically in the Buddha hall? Uh, uh, that's a hard question. I never thought of that. You have to ask Shakyamuni Buddha. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 no, you're not. From my perspective, no, you know, I can't see your face. <laughs> it's not about technically in the, in being in the Buddha hall. It's about learning. So uh, whatever it takes to learn, that's the main thing. Okay? okay? It's always uh, 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 compromises. Yes, YouTube. I'm sorry. Uh, LTD said uh, Buddha land, not the Buddha hall. Yes, you're in in uh, Shakyamuni Buddha's uh, Buddha land. Absolutely. Okay, uh, we are. Uh, he's still watching over us. And that's why he has all these temples, all the sangha, all the dharma available to us, because he's he's uh, trying to help us, even in the worst circumstances, COVID. 19 and everything. We still are exploring the universe ourselves. Okay? Next body is sound hearer body. Okay? All the sound hearers. Okay? Uh, is, that's why it's not uncommon for the Buddha to manifest as a sound hearer in front of us. Okay? All the sound hearers are part of his body. Pratyeka. Uh, Buddha body, the Bodhisattva body, okay? Uh, the Bodhisattva body, I like to think that's from Mahayana, and that's the favorite body of the Buddha, I think. Huh? Just advertising, advertisement for Mahayana, if you will. Okay? 
Don't go for small worries. God, you guys, you guys are so are so limited. You only see money. You only see houses, bodhisattvas, are more fun. They have everything. And the Buddha owns them. <laughs> uh, the Thakata, hmm? body. Ah, he also has uh, the wisdom body. He also has the Dharma body. And this Dharma body here is the universe. Wisdom body is all the wisdom in the world. That's his body. Uh, by the way, wisdom body here, okay? It includes architectural knowledge. Did you know that? Engineering knowledge. That's part of his wisdom body. Okay? There's nothing he does not know. Nothing he does not own. Ah, Dharma body. Uh, Dharma body is the entire universe, okay? Uh, emptiness uh, body, okay? Si kung shan zo, si shan. Okay, si kung shan. Uh, emptiness itself is part of the body of the Buddha, okay? So after he just became a Buddha, just fulfilled his, uh, his mission to become a Buddha, okay? He immediately had those 10 bodies. Yes, you too. Uh, Tango asks, uh, Master, how are these 10 bodies different to the three bodies of Buddha often mentioned? Why, uh, we are, why are we usually mentioning the three but not the 10? Well, it depends on, on the purpose of the teaching. The three bodies are for a different purpose. When they talk about three bodies, it's uh, to talk about uh, uh, cultivation. From a cultivation perspective, uh, you have the transformation body, is, is, uh, is, um, and then the reward body, and, and the Dharma body. Uh, the Dharma body is the entire universe. The, uh, uh, the uh, reward body is uh, uh, the huge reward body Buddha is used to teach bodhisattvas. Bodhisattvas actually love big bodies. The bigger, the better. The more gold, the better. The more silver, the better. The more diamonds, the better. Okay? Bodhisattvas actually love big bodies. Precious bodies. They love jewels. Isn't that cool? They're real. What's not to love about diamonds and gold? Hmm. And then, of course, transform transformation body is the body that's uh, used to teach living beings, to save living beings. So those three bodies are mentioned in the context of preaching of saving the world. But the 10 bodies here uh, include all those. Okay, you have the reward body, which includes the reward body that we, of the three bodies. Uh, and then you have transformation bodies, include living beings body, includes the Buddha land body, includes the uh, Ahat bodies and so forth. You see that? So that's why, and that's why uh, they're uh, these different ways to look at the bodies of the Buddha, that's all. Okay? All right. Next, we have 10 more minutes. Uh, commentary on slide 71. Hmm. Proper enlightenment first perfected. So as soon as he became, uh, the reached proper enlightenment. Okay? A proper enlightenment is when you have the proper knowledge and the proper views, okay? Proper knowledge uh, is the knowledge that is, uh, is proper because it is in accord, is consistent with 
the law of cause and effect. Okay? It does not violate cause and effect. Views, same thing. Whatever you do, whatever the uh, karmas you create are consistent with cause and effect. Okay? Yeah. That's called proper views. So that you don't, don't do erroneous things. You don't do improper things. Okay? The non-Buddhists do not have proper enlightenment. Only the Buddhists have the proper enlightenment. I'm sorry, no, you don't say all you want, anything you want. But proper enlightenment is reserved for us. Okay? Like it or not. Uh, uh, however, um, uh, it's only a state. Anyone and everyone can attain uh, this state of proper enlightenment, can reach Buddhahood, okay? have equal chances. In particular, uh, for example, in, uh, in, um, in a Chan school, we have a certain enlightenment, meaning that from totally confused person, like a six-page chart, he's just a confused person, illiterate person, poor, uneducated. And by hearing one phrase of the Vasha Sutra, he's certified to four stage Arhat. Boom, just like that. All right? So it's possible for us, so including for someone who's illiterate, who is very poor, who is very low class, okay, uh, to become enlightened. Anyone has the same chance. Everyone has the same chance. Okay? Uh, but reach for the big picture, you know, uh, don't worry about equal rights, equal pay, equal sex, whatever, that, whatever they're talking about. That's worldly. Okay? We're talking about equal big honcho. Okay? Equal superman. Everyone can be a superman. Hmm. All right. Next. Wait, wait, wait. So, uh, as soon as the Buddha uh, reached Buddhahood, perfected Buddhahood, okay, uh, that's when he spoke, uh, uh, and, that, and he attained Buddhahood because he, write, he wrote on the vows, okay, and, and the result of conduct all pervasive. Meaning what? Oh, this is so Buddhist. I think we lost the non-Buddhist already. Yes. What does it mean, writing vows and conduct all pervasive? It is so Buddhist. These, these are beautiful, beautiful Buddhist jargons that, 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 that uh, is worth knowing about. Okay? Writes vows. Okay? To ride. It's so like a horse. Ride a Tesla. Welcome, by the way, <laughs> those of you who are drive Teslas. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> okay? Uh, so you write, you write. So you get on top of something and you're powered by the horse or the horsepower, HP. What is it? 237 HP? Uh, something like that. Yeah. More than my van. Uh, okay? has more horsepower. Okay. Uh, so you ride, okay? You ride on the vows. Meaning what? Vows are power. Yeah. Yeah, I give him a microphone. He has a lot of objections. Objections, not opposition. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the vows could be the one that Buddhists do when uh, when they do the vows, like of um, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know what vows you guys make, but the vows that you guys make. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we all make vows. I vow to become rich and famous. Okay, so I'm riding on that. So one day I become rich and famous. Okay, but now is it better to do the vows on? Um, and when you guys do the 
spouse to, um, well, the Buddhist spouse is, I think it's gives yeah, yeah, more yeah, freedom yeah. than yeah, 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 yeah. the vows that you make yeah, to yeah, yeah. become rich or whatever. I vow to say hello to God in his palace. I made a vow already. Okay. Yeah. Uh, never made a vow, any vow about Teslas, electric cars. <laughs> never mind. But, but, uh, but the, the point here is in the journey towards Buddhahood, which we all go to Buddhahood, whether you like it or not, okay? It's such a journey that we're all on this path, okay? At various stages of the journey, depending on who you are. Uh, we make vows. In the process, when I was younger, I vowed to become a millionaire. Okay? That's part of my vows. Okay? So, that propelled me to go to, uh, uh, to school, do my homework, and work hard so that someday I can make more money. I know how to make more money to support my beloved mother. <laughs> no talking to anyone in particular. <laughs> it's not for you, boy. <laughs> Okay, so we all have vows, and these vows are the power, the drive us towards the goals. Does it make sense? It's very Buddhist. Buddhists, if you understand Buddhism, Mahayana, we make vows. Hinayana, we don't make vows. They don't make vows. Mahayana, we make vows. Actually, when you become enlightened, okay? Higher level enlightenment, like Masha Shuyun, he makes tons of vows. Masha Shinoa made tons of vows, even more than Masha Shuyun. So that's why the other day, uh, last week, uh, uh, someone said, you know, Bami Taba has 48 vows. He says, no, 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 he has 48 million vows. I wasn't kidding. Can you see that? Before you become a Buddha, you write your vows, all kinds of vows. So we encourage you to make all kinds of vows, okay? All kinds. Don't be afraid, because those are the forces that propel you to go towards your, you know, the vows are what drives you, okay? So it's okay. So you make a vow and you go back to your games. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Jewel Mountain has a question. No? Again, sound issues? Okay. You let them figure it out. We only have a few more minutes. Figure it out quickly. Well, uh, Drew Mountain's here. Drew Mountain's here. Uh, uh, question is, is it possible that the Buddha or Bodhisattva can appear in my friend's body and teach me? Then the friend just returns to normal again after teaching and doesn't know what happened? Absolutely. Very possible. Okay. I perhaps about a lot more often than you think. All right. Vows and conducts. Okay, you make vows. What's that? That uh, that that uh, that the cube. Now I'm confused. Rubik's cube. Go for it. Go ahead. Go for it. Cube. Um, master. Uh, <laughs> regarding vows. Uh, so first question. Um. You, you mentioned your five vows a few weeks ago. Um, may I ask uh, if you made the vows um, this lifetime or was that before, from before? Um, Is that from before question, this please. lifetime? No, it's on, it's right after people talk about <laughs> 40, uh, yeah, uh, 18 vows. I laugh, I said, 
why would you bow to 18 vows like that? I give you five vows that, 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 uh, that are shorter, uh, less time, and uh, as equally uh, 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 generates equally amount of uh, blessings. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> so it's happened this lifetime, one time, as part of my 47 million vows. We Buddhist uh, Mahayana practitioners, we make vows. Don't worry about it. It's just like everything else, we get better at making vows. And we encourage you to make vows because that's what drives you, points you in the direction and energizes you to go towards it. Bring forth the body mind is the vow. Think about it. We vow to become a Buddha. That's the most important vow right there. Everything else is secondary. You see that? You're going to become a Buddha. So along the, along the way, we uh, become dragons, we become, you know, uh, you know, we become, we become uh, 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 Chinese to save Chinese, and, you know, become a woman to fight for women's rights, you know, all those people. That's, that's uh, normal. That's how it, how it goes. No big deal. You've got Mother Teresa. No problem. Okay? You make a vow. Okay? And these vows translate into conducts. Because if you make a vow, if you don't do anything about it, it's called Grandstanding, it's called false advertising, it's called being a cheap salesman, trying to impress others, that's all. So vows, okay, uh, that are not accompanied, they are not translated into specific actions, okay, uh, are useless. Demonstrate lack of sincerity. Okay? Uh, the vows with how actions are called lies. <sighs> and that's suffering. Anyway, uh, uh, all pervasive, finally, all pervasive. Uh, uh, all pervasive meaning that you what? Everywhere. You don't just save uh, and make America great alone. You have to make the whole world great again. M W G A. Facebook post. <laughs> okay? No, because it has to be all inclusive. Remember, this is his Buddha land. It's all his. You cannot say only America is his, only China is his, only we all know they all belong to Vietnam, right? I told you that many times. Okay? Uh, you, can, you cannot exclude them. We're talking about one Buddha land. You know what? The funny thing is that the Buddha's vows are way beyond the other. This Buddha land is, it goes to the other lands as well. It's all pervasive throughout the universe. Okay, so that's why we keep on making vows and vows and vows, and then we say, oh, that vows is kind of short, fall short. Okay, today is make America great again. Tomorrow we make, make America and uh, Canada great again. Okay, so we invade Canada, or Canada invades us. Who cares? But, you know, we make both countries great again, and then we 
take over Mexico. Now we make, you make, we, we make uh, North America great again. That kind of thing. So we all progress naturally. As your wisdom increases, your vows become more pervasive. More all-inclusive. Okay? So that's why, you know, don't worry, just make vows, you know, make vows. Lots of vows, vows after vows after vows, and then remember those vows. And the best thing is that these vows here that the Buddha's made, this Buddha made, he made them in front of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas so that the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas would come back and remind him. You know, hey, Shakyamuni Buddha, do you remember before when you were uh, in uh, Rosemead, you, know, you made a vow to, you know, to get good grades? <laughs> Have you forgotten? Okay, so th when you make vows the, in front of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, you make vows, make vows here in front of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And then they remember, and they will come and remind you. Because we can't remember all 48 million vows. That's why they have to come and remind us. Yeah. Okay? All right, we stop here tonight. The next time we uh, continue on slide 73. Thank you all. <laughs>